Pardon? Okay. Again, uh, good afternoon. It's working, yeah. <coughs> okay, just uh, to go back to one of the questions. Uh, instead to stay only on the collision theory, transition state theory, and so on, uh, nowadays there are a large effort in the, in the better definition of uh, rate constants. Particularly, it's important the work of uh, Klippenstein, Truller, and uh, uh, referred in here, that is the current sta status of transition state theory. On that basis, uh, the so-called quantum Rice-Rasberger castle modified strong collision method is giving very nice information related to the rate uh, kinetic parameters. And uh, in this block, you, you can uh, observe the way uh, reaction rates are uh, fed inside, uh, let's say, Kenkin program or similar <coughs> program in order to define the tail kinetic mechanism. And uh, until we are staying on the, the trough form, that is uh, the way to present uh, the Lindman constant uh, by combining the two asymptotic behavior, low pressure and high pressure limit, we need to express the rate parameters of the low pressure limit the rate parameters of the high pressure limit. And after that, we need also four different parameters that are the true parameters that are the way is combining low and high pressure limits. There are other ways to present this, the Lindman, the SRI, or there are several ways you can combine the low and the high pressure limit for uh, for this kind of uh, kinetic equation. In the meantime, if you are using uh, RRKM uh, MA or QRRK MSC, you go to more uh, complex uh, kinetic formulation. And in several occasions, you have the information of uh, the rate constant by bearing the pressure. Instead to have directly a combination of the low and high pressure limits, you are giving several expressions for different pressures, and then you are uh, making regression between the, the two information of the two. The information given at pressure 1 is combined with information pressure 1.5 in order to understand the proper rate in the, in the, in the, in the, in the between. More complex uh, formulas are also proposed in terms of Chebyshev uh, polynomials, and once again, there are, uh, let's say, Kemkin or similar uh, compilers that are able to, to handle the complexity of this formulation. Anyway, let's go back to, to our point. <coughs> we were in the uh, explosion limit of the hydrogen-oxygen system. Slow reaction, explosion. Slow reaction and uh, light, light, em light emission. If uh, we are in this position, then nothing happening and... Uh, uh, the reaction is very, is very low, but, but if uh, we take our vessel and uh, we reduce the, the pressure, then we are entering an explosion limit, uh, and the reverse is also true. If uh, we are increasing the pressure, we, we enter the explosion limit. The way to explain explosion, the easiest way in the case of combustion, is to say, okay, if I have a system and I am uh, analyzing uh, the effect of a combustion reaction that is producing heat. It is clear that I am heating up the system and I'm going toward explosion. Semenov, Frank Kamenetsky, they studied the system where we are considering a perfectly still reactor, close to the exchange, but with an exchange of uh, heat with the external. So we have uh, a reaction of order n that is producing heat. The reaction heat is, uh, here is the reaction heat. Uh, so we have uh, the heat uh, produced inside our reactor is uh, V multiplied by Q multiplied by R. So this is the expression of the reaction rate of order n. And in the meantime, uh, we have uh, the capability to exchange heat with the external. And this heat is proportional to the heat transfer coefficient, the surface of exchange, as well as the delta T. Now, 
if uh, we plot if uh, we plot the heat, uh, the heat losses from the reactor, it's clear that the, this is the straight line. If uh, we want to plot also the, the, the heat produced by the reaction, then it depends on the reactivity of the system we are considering. The red curve indicates a low reactivity of the system. Let's suppose low concentration of the reactant. Low concentration of the reactant, low production of heat. If uh, we try to combine production and losses of it, then we can find the solution in here. And uh, OK, this is uh, the point where the system try to organize the temperature that is equivalent to the proper rate of production and the rate of uh, exchange. If inside our system we have uh, the blue line, so there is high concentration. So a very high concentration, it means that C power n is very high. Q1 is higher than in the case, uh, in the red case. So we are in the situation where the temperature inside the system is always rising until we are burning all our fuels, in, until the complete combustion of the system. The critical condition, the critical uh, the transition between uh, low reaction and uh, explosion is uh, when we have uh, a tangent position between the production of heat and the heat exchange by, by our system. So if we try formally to, to say that we, we want to have exactly the same Q1 and Q2, but we want also to have the same derivatives, we can write that equation. And finally, what we can obtain is that in order to have satisfied this relation, we can define a function of uh, pressure is a function of temperature that, of course, it depends on the order of reaction. But in both of the cases, what we can observe is a monotonic behavior. So if uh, we try to explain the explosion diagram in terms of uh, thermal ignition, then we can observe that uh, we move from a slow reaction to explosion region by rising either the pressure or the temperature, or both. So we cannot explain the behavior of the hydrogen oxygen system. So we need uh, to verify the possibility to have explosion on the basis of the chemistry. And on the basis of the chemistry, let's say that a very simple system, chain reaction system for, uh, fuel, for fuel combustion in a very simplified way is reported in here. We have uh, initiation reaction. So, the fuel S, the molecule S, is giving rise to a couple of radicals. And the R is the propagating radical. But R can propagate, so uh, the radicals are attack uh, the, the fuel and is forming uh, a certain number of radical plus products. So let's say that instead to have a simple propagation, we can have a propagation where there is a certain number of radicals produced by reaction number two. Reaction number three and reaction number four are recombination reaction. Reaction where the radicals, they disappear, either because they are deactivated with the collision with the third body, or is deactivated due to the collision with the surface. Now, if we try to, to write the rate of formation of radicals are we, we can say that the two radicals are formed with the, the first reaction, while the one minus alpha radicals are disappearing with the second, one is disappearing with the third and with the fourth reaction. Again, if uh, we put the, if uh, we state the steady state approximation for the intermediate radicals, we are obtaining a <coughs> this kind of expression. And what is saying this kind of expression that we have a nominator and a denominator. Condition of explosion can be obtained when the radicals are produced in an uncontrolled way. So if the radical concentration is rising in a very high way, then we can expect explosion in our system. So we can say that uh, chemical ignition can be obtained by putting to zero the denominator. And 
To put zero the, the denominator, it means that uh, we need uh, a very simple uh, uh, algebra. We can uh, arrive at, the, at this expression. Alpha need to be higher than one plus a ratio that is uh, comparing the initiation rate and uh, the disappearance rate. So what is, is necessary inside our system is to have a generation of radicals. And the critical condition, that is the zero of this denominator, the radical concentration going to infinity, is that we need to have a branching ratio higher than one. So we need to have a propagation reactions that are very, very fast, and they are rising with the number of radicals. So let's suppose that you have one radical that is producing two radicals. So you are doubling uh, the number of radicals in your, in your system. If you instead uh, to have only one passage, we have a two, three, four passage, the number of radicals is going up, is going up, is rising with power, two power n. So you, you see that in a very rapid way with the branching ratio higher than one, you can have very fast growing radical and you can explain on this basis <coughs> and you can explain in, on this basis uh, the, the chemical ignition. Now, here is reported a oxidation, a, a kinetic scheme of oxidation and combustion of uh, hydrogen. This table is, report, is uh, taken from the book of uh, Professor Lowe of Princeton. We see that uh, is a, is a complex uh, detail kinetic scheme because despite of the fact that the system is very simple, hydrogen plus oxygen, the system is uh, containing a lot of uh, <coughs> a lot of reaction, 19 reactions, direct and reverse reaction, and uh, reaction are of different types. We have initiation and termination reaction, O plus O giving rise to O2, O plus H giving rise to OH, H plus OH giving rise to two, a more clear termination reaction giving rise to water. Then we have also propagation reactions, like the first one, O plus H2. Okay, O plus H2 is not really, okay, it's a more complicated story because we can assume O, O like a B radical. O contains two ampere electrons. So we are moving from two radicals to two radicals on the other side. But let's say that it's not the typical propagation reaction. Let's take the third one. Uh, OH plus HO2, here is clear. I have one radical, OH, is becoming H2O, and is propagating the chain, giving rise to one other radical, H. The, the same is true in uh, in this case, H plus so 2 one radical giving rise to one other radical. Then, of course, there are um, more complex situations, but uh, in any case, what is, uh, without doubt, a chain branching reaction is the first one. H plus O2. H plus O2 is the, probably the most important reaction in combustion. H plus O2, because we are giving rise to OH plus O. It means that we are forming from one radical, H, we are attacking hydrogen, uh, oxygen, and we are forming hydroxyl radical, OH, plus O, that again is a B radical. That is why the second reaction is that uh, this one is, is giving us the information that O, B radical, become oxygen radical plus H. But in any case, I repeat that the first one is the key reaction in order to explain the high reactivity of a combustion system. From one radical, we are going to two radicals that really are practically equivalent to three, three radical positions. So I can see in branching. Twelve. Is it in Twelve. Twelve. H O two. Yeah, okay or termination. It depends how you can see this reaction. 
because I have one radical, and if I'm saying that this is equivalent to two radicals, I have one plus two equal one. But if I'm going this direction, OH is attacking O, is giving rise to the equivalent of three radicals. It's true. I can see chain termination or propagation. It depends uh, on the way you are, uh, OK? Anyway, it's all in order to say. First of all, that it is a complex system. Second, we can try to classify reaction even if uh, on the basis of the oxygen. That is a B radical, something that can be not univocally defined. But let's go back to our system. We want to explain the dead behavior of the system. What I'm trying to explain is this fact, that we have, instead of only one mechanism, we have two different mechanisms. One that is typical of the low pressure, and one that is typical of the high pressure. And then we have a transition between the two chemical mechanisms. In this way, at least we can go back to, the, to our way to explain the kinetic, the, the explosion in the term of explosion, a slow reaction. I'm only saying that uh, two different chemical mechanisms are playing a role in the upper part, high pressure mechanism, or in the lower part, low pressure mechanism. And if uh, we try to see the thing in this way, then we can say that the low pressure mechanism is clearly given by this couple of reactions. H plus O2 is giving rise to OH plus O. At low pressure, this is uh, the path, and then uh, we are forming O. O, again, is attacking hydrogen, is forming OH, plus hydrogen. We can uh, simplify, and the net result is that uh, moving from hydrogen plus oxygen, we are forming two oxidary radicals. And we are forming two oxidary radicals that are very reactive. This is the key point in the low pressure mechanism. If uh, we go to the high pressure mechanism, Again, we are considering the interaction between H and O2. O2, there is the double bond. H is sticking on the double bond. But if uh, we have enough pressure, then there are a lot of uh, third body. And uh, can prevail the mechanism where uh, instead uh, to have H plus O2 giving rise to radicals, uh, due to the fact that we are distributing the energy in some way to third partners, then uh, the net result can be that hydrogen is sticking on the double bond. <coughs> hydrogen is, is forming hydrogen, uh, the radical hydrogen hydroperoxide, HO2. And HO2 is a, a more stable radical. It's not so aggressive like uh, hydroxyl radical. Anyway, HO2 radical can attack hydrogen and can form hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. So the net result is not to form a 2OH but to form H2O2. So it's a, it's a molecule. It's true that hydrogen peroxide is not very unstable, or that it's not very, very stable, because sometimes we are saying, no, it's a good generator of radicals. It's true. But we need to overcome the third limit. We need to have high temperature in order to have the real uh, dissociation of hydrogen hydroperoxide to form again the, the two hydrogen peroxide. So the first mechanism is directly producing the radicals. The second mechanism is producing the radicals only if you reach enough temperature to, to go ahead with, uh, with this kind of uh, propagation process. And uh, what we can say is that if uh, we try to say, let's try to, to put the two uh, kinetic reaction or the two kinetic parameters, let to, to make this kind of ratio. The low pressure rate constant divided by, by the high pressure low constant, uh, the high pressure rate constant. In order to have uh, the same dimension, I need to multiply by M. So this ratio, I put this ratio equal one, I can find in this way a function of temperature and pressure. And the function of temperature and pressure is exactly, or is coherent with the second limit. And the meaning is that if I'm rising with the pressure, is prevailing the high pressure mechanism. If I'm reducing the pressure, then I move into 
the explosion re region that is typical of the low pressure mechanism. So this is, for sure, this is a, a good in kinetic information relating to the, trans to the movement from the non-explosion to the high explosion limit in this way. Then we can uh, say that uh, the low pressure limit is uh, also due to the diffusion of radicals to the, to the wall, so it's not directly obtained in the same way. We can say that uh, also the high pressure limit, uh, this one is also dependent uh, on the reactor we are analyzing and on the heat exchange we can assume with the external. And if you like to have uh, further information about that, let's say that uh, Professor Williams and co-workers last year, they presented uh, a paper exactly on this system and uh, particularly discussing uh, the question relating to the third limit of explosion. Now, let me try to recover some time. Uh, these are, okay, the typical condition we can observe in the ignition of uh, the hydrogen oxygen system. What I like to spend a few words in, is uh, in this uh, couple of figures uh, where we are saying that uh, a hierarchical modularity of the kinetic scheme is really a key point, an important point in all of these big and huge kinetic mechanisms we can develop. First of all, we need to be sure about our hydrogen oxygen mechanism because in all the remaining system, the hydrogen oxygen system is always playing a, a significant role because practically all uh, the fuels, they are releasing hydrogen atoms hydrogen radicals, and then hydrogen, of course, through the branching reaction, hydrogen plus O2 give rise to the combustion chain, uh, chain mechanism. So, similarly in here, we need to start, to start from the hydrogen system, then we add, uh, uh, progressively we can add CO, methane, CO2, and so on. So this is the concept of the hierarchical modularity of the kinetic scheme. Let me take a very simple example. If uh, we want to analyze also the oxidation of CO to CO2, what we, what we have to do, or what we can do, is to simply add to the previous 19 or 20 reactions of the hydrogen oxygen system, the typical reaction of uh, the CO oxidation to CO2. So we can take into account CO plus O giving rise to CO2, but also CO plus OH, CO plus HO2, and simply by adding four reactions to the previous scheme, we move from the hydrogen oxygen system to the hydrogen oxygen system, including also CO and CO2. Only few reactions are useful in order to extend progressively the scheme. If we want to spend a few words on the CO monoxide oxidation, it is more, it's important to say that this reaction, CO plus O2, is uh, very slow. It requires a very high activation energy. Why is in the case of a uh, system where also only ppm of uh, water or hydrogen are present inside our system, then we find inside the system hydroxyl radical. And the reaction CO plus OH is very important and faster than the previous one. And uh, taking into account that also in the common air, there, are, uh, humi there is a humidity. So usually the wet uh, uh, CO oxidation is uh, the prevailing uh, oxidation path. Then uh, we can uh, say that uh, the reaction CO plus HO2 is important in gas turbine, is important at uh, partially important at uh, high pressure. Now, if we want to make a more uh, complex uh, the system or uh, the way to produce this, it's clear that in this case we are proposing a temperature pressure uh, ignition diagram for uh, <coughs> propane oxygen, and we see that there are uh, uh, more complexity in this, uh, in this diagram. And, uh, okay, first of all, note that instead of to have the pressure in here, we have uh, the temperature. So instead of to have a pressure, temperature here is reported in the reverse sense. So temperature versus pressure. But again, I can observe that there are practically two different chemical mechanisms, one of the high temperature, one of the low temperature. 
Now, we have seen already this picture, and in this picture, we have also seen that the fuel conversion usually takes place in advance in respect of most of the combustion reactions. So pyrolysis hierarchically precedes <coughs> oxidation reactions. At least at high temperature, pyrolysis reactions are prevailing, are, are preceding the successive oxidation and combustion reactions. So let's, let's try to analyze as a, a possible chain reaction mechanism, chain radical mechanism, the pyrolysis of normal butane. Normal butane is a simple molecule. We have the two sketches uh, representing always normal C4H10. It's an alkane. And uh, chain initiation reaction. In order to, to have a chain radical mechanism, first of all, we have to to form the radicals. And the radicals are formed by breaking some bond. In the first case, we are breaking the bond in the middle of the molecule, and we are forming two ethyl radicals, C2H5. In the second case, we have two possibilities to break the terminal bond, forming methyl plus one propyl radical. We can see from here that there are also the possibility to break CH bond. But due to the fact that CH bond are stronger than CC bond, it's easier to break the CC bond, and these reactions are of lower importance. So the chemical bond with the smaller bond dissociation energy are more prone to dissociate. And the hydrogenation are less favored than pyrolysis or CC breaking reactions. Chain propagation reaction. Once we are forming the radicals, the radicals, they can attack. Radicals are very unstable. There is an ampere electron. They try to stabilize. And the way they can stabilize is to catch some hydrogen outside. And if we are looking to the butane, to normal butane uh, pyrolysis, then we are finding butane inside the system. We are taking an hydrogen from, uh, from, the, from the chain, from the carbon chain. And we can take either the terminal or the inner uh, hydrogen, but after that we can have a, a radical decomposition reaction. So this uh, radical can form a double bond with the, with the adjacent uh, carbon atom, having a beta decomposition reaction that is uh, breaking uh, this radical and forming uh, ethane, ethylene plus ethyl radicals or in this case, forming a propyl plus a methyl radical. Of course, in the case of chain initiation, of course, uh, the radicals can be hydrogen, methyl, or can be ethyl, propyl, all the possible radicals present in our system. But in the case of the chain radical mechanism, we need also <coughs> to account for chain termination reactions. So radicals plus radicals, they can recombine. Methyl plus methyl can form ethane. Methyl plus uh, ethyl form propane. Ethyl plus ethyl can form again uh, butane. So the reverse of that reaction are also possible chain termination reactions. H radicals are not effective in recombination reaction. H radical is true. H radical is present in our system. But if we try to, comp to analyze H plus H reaction, we can easily see that uh, there is a lot of energy, 104 kilocalories, for each of the collision to form H2. So we are forming an H2 molecule so excited that the net result is that it's forming again H plus H. And the same is also true if I'm trying to recombine H plus methyl. H plus methyl gives rise to methane. But again, methane molecule is too small to distribute the energy and to be stable. So H plus methyl is giving rise to an activated methane and rapidly methane dissociated to form again methyl plus hydrogen. So hydrogen radical recombination reactions are not very effective in pyrolysis condition. And if we try to see the results in the case of butane pyrolysis, 
uh, let's say at 1100 Kelvin, one atmosphere, we see that uh, um, butane is decomposing and uh, we are forming a propylene, we are forming ethylene, we are forming methane as major product. We are forming only a lower amount of butene, mainly because we said already the hydrogenation are more difficult than the breaking of the molecules. So the amount of butene is lower than. The other point is that we can observe is that uh, propylene show a maximum. So it means that uh, instead of to go ahead, uh, we have also reactions that are consuming propylene. There are secondary reactions. That is why we have uh, in the second slide uh, several uh, different information. One way to, to see uh, the progress of the different reaction, how the reaction proceed, is the so-called reaction path analysis. And the reaction path analysis here given when the butane conversion is 50% is giving us the information that mostly the reaction goes through the chain abstraction reaction. There are these chain abstraction reactions that account for roughly 90% of butane combustion. Mostly the pyrolysis process go through the H abstraction reactions. Only less than 10% is due to chain initiation reaction. Again, we can see that. Let's take this branch that is the, the more important one, the most important one. We are forming two butyl radicals, two butyl radicals decomposed to form propylene plus methyl. And we can have only a dotted line in here indicating that the possibility to have H the formation of H radical, the hydrogenation to form butene is very minor in respect of the prevailing, of the other prevailing path. Then we have also the importance of successive reactions and so on. But let's spend a few words about the beta decomposition reactions. Beta decomposition reactions are reactions that are very, very fast because uh, here is reported, for instance, the normal propyl radical, C3H5, the radical we can form by pyrolysis of propane, or the radical we have formed through the chain, through the chain initiation reaction of, uh, of, <coughs> of butane. Here are, are also reported the bond dissociation energy. Due to the presence of the radical position in this, in this point, we see that if we call alpha and beta the, the two carbon bond, we have a very strong carbon-carbon bond close to the radical and a very weak carbon bond in the beta position. Due to the presence of the radicals, this bond is weakened. Is weakened. And the same is also true for this chain hydrogen bond. It's only 34 in respect of something that is higher than 100. The net result is that we can have, as a prevailing one, this, this reaction, but we can also have this kind of dehydrogenation reaction. And if we try to, to see at the rate of decomposition, these are all, only order of magnitude. Let's say that I don't mind about a factor two, four, more or less of the reaction. But what I want to, to stress are the two different activation energies. If I'm looking at the decomposition, on the so-called beta decomposition reaction to form ethylene plus methyl, then I have something like 10 power 13, 30,000 kilocalories. If I'm trying to analyze it, the possibility to have dehydrogenation reactions, maybe that I have something more in terms of the frequency factor, mainly because I can break this or I can break that, I have several alternatives of dehydrogenation, but uh, what is important is that I have 40 kilocalories per mole instead of only 30. And if you account that uh, the exponential of the difference, uh, the exponential of 10,000 kilocalories per mole is a factor of about 100 at 1,000 Kelvin. If you evaluate the exponential of 10,000 divided by RT, a thousand Kelvin, you reach something like 100. The meaning is that this reaction is 100 times faster than this. 
this, the value of this reaction is only 1%, 2%, nothing more in respect of the, of the other one. Another important aspect is that uh, if instead to take uh, normal propyl radical, I'm taking normal exil or something like that, all the intermediate normal alkyl radical, the behavior is exactly the same. I can have uh, as favorite the beta decomposition reaction, and more than that, I can assume practically the same kinetic parameters. And there is an important rule. When I have a similar reaction, I can expect a very similar kinetic parameters. So I don't need to evaluate all the individual kinetic parameters, but inside similar reaction, I can assume a similar kinetic parameters. Now, we can go very, very shortly on propane pyrolysis. Is of course, is simpler than the previous one. Again, we have initiation reaction. Again, we can say that uh, hydro, uh, the breaking uh, to form hydrogen plus propyl radical are less important. Then we have uh, H abstraction reaction forming the two different propyl radicals. We can have uh, the possibility to form uh, ethylene plus methyl or propylene plus hydrogen. We have, again, the termination reaction. What we can say is that the propane pyrolysis is similar to the previous uh, pyrolysis of normal butane, and always the same reaction classes are always to be considered. We have a chain initiation. We have a H abstraction reaction. We have radical decomposition, beta radical decomposition, and we have a radical recombination. These are the different classes of reaction we have to account. Now, in the case of complex reaction mechanism, we know that uh, we can write this, uh, we can study, we can simulate the behavior of this complex reaction mechanism in terms of system of differential equation. In this case, I reported the other system, the ordinary differential equation system related to a perfectly steered reactor. And okay, we have always this kind of differential equation in terms of system of differential equation. And the system of differential equation is depending on the in independent variables, let's say typically concentration. Then we have uh, parameters of uh, our uh, system. And we have other parameters, let's say the kinetic parameters. It is important to study the sensitivity analysis. And the sensitivity analysis is giving us the information how concentration can vary if uh, we are varying the kinetic parameter. What is happening? For the concentration of, uh, of my fuel, if I am doubling uh, reaction number one, reaction number two, reaction number three, so it's clear that we have a matrix. Uh, that is, uh, the index I is referring to the different species. The index J is referring to all the possible kinetic parameters, to all the possible reactions. It is really more convenient to use the normalized sensitivity coefficient. So instead of to use uh, simply S, uh, J, Y, divided by the alpha, we have uh, the y uh, di divided by the alpha multiplied by alpha divided by y, that is the differential of the log of y divided by the log of alpha. And in this way, we have uh, the relative sensitivity coefficient that is more useful, is more useful. As an example is reported in here, the sensitivity analysis for, the, for an hydrogen oxygen system. And uh, the sensitivity analysis for the hydrogen oxygen system is saying that uh, all the reactions uh, with the positive sensitivity coefficient, they decrease the, sens the, the reactivity, while the one with uh, a negative uh, <coughs> coefficient, they increase the reactivity. If uh, we see in here, this, uh, the increasing of reactivity in this system we don't, we don't mind about 15 or 30 atmospheres. The most sensitive reactions are, first of all, H plus O2. That is our branching reaction. From one radicals, we are producing two radicals. Also more important is the decomposition of uh, hydrogen, uh, H2O2. The composition of H, H2O2 or if you prefer the reverse, that is H abstraction of uh, HO2 radicals to H2 in order to form hydroxy, 
<coughs> hydrogen hydroperoxide or peroxide because after that uh, he can decompose forming OH plus OH. So the three of them are the most sensitive reaction in order to improve or, incre or increase the reactivity. From the other side, H plus O2, giving us the high pressure mechanism of before, is the one that is decreasing the reactivity because it's subtracting hydrogen radical to potentially go through a branching reaction. <coughs> it's subtracting hydrogen to branching reaction because it sticks hydrogen to oxygen in order to form HO2 radicals that are <laughs> that are less reactive. So rate of production analysis, uh, uh, reaction path analysis, we have seen already the reaction path analysis in the case of butane pyrolysis. We can see a very similar uh, rate production analysis in more complex systems like in the case of, of uh, normal, uh, normal heptate describing the relative weight of the different possible branching paths and so on. So these are also reported, uh, several uh, references I use uh, in order to produce uh, this uh, slide, uh, as well as, uh, of course, uh, interesting reading in order to complete.